start with Davian tonight, and then we'll get Coach in a second. Hey, Davian. Hey. Uh, just what was LSU doing defensively to kind of uh, cause the turnovers and, and make it such a hard time to get good shots off, man? Uh, we just didn't. Uh, we just didn't play as smart as we should have. Uh, I feel like uh, a lot of them turnovers were on us. Uh, it wasn't uh, nothing against LSU. I think they're a pretty good team, but a lot of turnovers were just us making mental mistakes, things that we know we, we're not supposed to be doing. But, um, yeah, a lot of it was on us. And and what do you think was the cause of that? Was Did they uh, just kind of get you all rushed a little bit? Was it a fatigue? Uh, is there something that – you can kind of pinpoint? Uh, I think uh, – I just think we just got to do a better job of just handling the pressure in general. Uh, I feel like when we did handle the pressure well and um, attack the, uh, their defense like we should have, uh, we got we got easy baskets. So, it's just more of doing what we're supposed to do. It's really just that simple, honestly. Davian, how clear was Coach about the phases of the non-conference schedule? He said he mentioned to you guys – that there's the first phase that you guys were 5-0 and in, but then starting this weekend, that's when you guys go on this run of playing four straight high major basketball programs. I guess, how did he lay that out to you guys? Oh, yeah, he, he's he's definitely uh, reiterated that a lot to us and put that in our head a lot because it, uh, it's, it's going to get tougher for us. You know what I'm saying? It don't get no easier from here. Uh, Big Ten Challenge on Tuesday, we played Northwestern, a really good team. I watched them play a few times, and uh, I think they can really play, so – and then we got at Virginia Tech last year, we beat us about like 40 last year. So, I mean, it, it doesn't get no easier up here. So we just got to learn from what we did today and and grow from it. You know what I'm saying? It's not the end of the world, but we, we just got to grow from what we didn't do well tonight. And what would you say was the biggest emphasis from last night to this game? Uh, Really, uh, I mean, we had like, what, like 17 turnovers, something like that, 22, something like that. But I know it was a lot, but we just got to cut that down. Uh, before the game, Coach said we got to keep that number under 12, and we had uh, 12 turnovers at halftime. So, I mean, I think that's the story of the game right there. Damien, was it Coach's decision that didn't have you out there to start the second half? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, That was Coach's decision. Did he tell you at halftime that he didn't like something about the way you were playing? Uh, at halftime, he said uh, Carter, uh, Carter Witt was going to start the second half, and I was like, okay, let's get it. Davian, did it feel good, like in the second, uh, in the final ten minutes or so, to to get some things going offensively? And do you think uh, you know getting some of those uh, runners and pull ups going down will help get your three point shot uh, back on track? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I just need. Um, I'm just missing shots right now that I usually make, but I still have the utmost confidence in myself and my team does as well. So they're going to start going in real soon. I'm not. I'm not really worried about that. Anything else, guys? Thanks, David. Thanks, David. All right, guys, we got a coach. He'll start with an opening statement. Well, I think it's pretty obvious that 22 turnovers was their best offense, you know, and there's really – it's there's no defense for 22 turnovers, uh, 14 steals. And uh, I talked to the team about uh, this type of game, this caliber of game in the locker room before we came out, and I explicitly said – we could not have more than 12 turnovers uh, for the whole game to have a chance to win. And we had 22. So, I mean, basically we shot ourselves in the foot. And then, you know, in the first half, we battled and stayed in the game with, I think, four of our guards going one for 20 from the field in the first half. So we're turning it over. We're not making shots, but we're still kind of there because I thought we played really hard. I thought our guys competed. Um, we we out-rebounded them. Uh, we had 16 offense rebounds, and they, you know, they tried to give it to us too. They had 17 turnovers, um, but t- we just couldn't overcome 20, 22 turnovers. And and um, so playing games like this are good. It's not the end of the world, but we got to learn from them, all of us. You know, we got to look in the mirror and figure out what those issues are, and get ready for an, another really tough game on Tuesday at home against uh, Northwestern. Steve, did the physical nature of the game kind of take your team out of what they're kind of used to being able to do? I think, yeah, I think early on for sure, Les. I, I thought they were quicker and more athletic. 
tougher. Not I want to say tougher. That's not right. Um, but but more physical. Yeah, you know they played uh, they played they played hard, and I thought it affected us the way we passed. We caught it. We dribbled it. We let it. We let, we let it really bother, especially some of the younger guys on the team. And so, um, you know, and that was the thing. Bless, you know, I was up. I talked to the team afterwards about is, hey, what else did you do to help us win besides if you weren't scoring? We're not gonna ask, we're not gonna shoot 50 percent from three every night. We just went through it. So we got to do other things. We got guys playing a lot of minutes, no rebounds, no assists. You know, so that can't happen. And so we got to look hard at that. But, yeah, I thought their physicality was definitely a factor uh, in the game. Steve, you talked about the middle eight before, and it seemed like mm -hmm. with a couple minutes to go in the first half, your team was only down three. Yep. With everything else that had gone on, that's not the worst situation. Then you no. give up a seven to nothing run to end the half. Was that, really that pretty demor demoralizing? I don't know if it was demoralizing. It hurt, yeah. You know, um, I felt good with 22 turnovers. <laughs> You know, maybe at that point, 20, but probably had two more after that. Well, I shouldn't say that at halftime. I think we had we had double digits. But, um, yeah, I, you know, we weren't shooting it well, but we were getting good shots. I mean, I didn't think yeah, a couple of them, you know, Dallas banked in a three, whatever. You know, we got sped up one time over in the corner with four guys standing on top of each other into one possession. That was bad. But for the most part, we, we were getting some decent looks. We are making them. You know, and um, so, yeah, I think that did – that was a hard. But, you know, still we made another run in the second half. I think we had it down again, you know, and then they just – they kept they kept us at bay. Steve, when it comes to the turnovers, did you see a common thread with the way Oregon State played you guys, particularly in the second half and what LSU did today to force those turnovers? Well, yeah, I mean, they're both aggressive, Josh, but Oregon State wasn't picking us up full court. And you know, we knew – LSU was going to pressure us for sure. Um, but I thought a lot of our turnovers were just careless and against, I thought, just okay pressure. I mean, and that's no disrespect to LSU. I've, I've played them before and, you know, a lot of times. And uh, I've seen them with a lot more pressure. And we just didn't – we just made silly passes, lazy passes. And when you do that against quick and athletic teams – you know, they're going to they're gonna take advantage of that. Um, I didn't think we had as many in the half court, but maybe we, I have to go back and watch. But the ones that stick out in my mind were just silly plays that we just can't make. Do you think that this could do your team some good, though, facing athletes like that and knowing this is what's going to come? Oh, no question. You know, we talked about that after the game. Like, you know, they're going to see a lot of teams like this in the ACC or – or even and, and better, you know. Again, no disrespect to LSU, they whipped our tail, but I don't, I don't think they're going to win the ACC, you know. And so, um, we got to, we got, yeah. I think it gives our guys, you know, something that hey, hang their hat on. Now we can't do this, and that's why you play these games. You know, a lot of teams. I mean, Virginia Tech had, you know, they played some tough teams this weekend, lost a couple, and we've all lost in the league except Duke. You know, so it's not. It's not the end of the world, but it, but we have to learn from it and not continue to make the same mistakes. And I thought for 80, we came down here and played 80 minutes and we played about 30 minutes of good basketball, right? We played 20 in the first half against Oregon State. I thought we played five pretty good minutes to start the second half last night. We're up 20. And then we probably played five pretty good minutes in overtime, you know, to win the game. Other than that, no. And so it was 80 minutes and we played about, I don't know, what did I just say? 30? So we got a lot, we got some things to work on. Steve, kind of along those lines, and maybe this is a overused cliche when a team loses its first game, but is this a little bit of a reality check? Uh maybe. I don't know. We'll see how they handle it. Um they were um obviously disappointed and very quiet in the locker room. Uh, I don't know about reality. I mean, I, I'm pretty good at keeping things pretty real with them. Um, I don't sugarcoat anything. And um, I knew what we were up against and they knew we told them now, but did they, did they fully understand and believe, well, they're young kids, probably not, but the older guys should, they've been in it. They've seen it. 
And so, um, you know, I mean, yeah, you know, we're six and oh, and I'm sure human nature would be, hey, you know, feeling pretty good about yourself. Huh? That's okay. I wanted them to. They need to have confidence. And they, they don't need to uh, hang their head. You know, we need to we need to play with some swag. And so uh, we'll learn from it and we'll, we'll move on. Coach, use the lineup with um, Dallas and Kadeem a bit today. What do you like about that look and what look does that? Well, I think that coming? we can rebound the ball a little better, you know, um, and Dream hit a three and, you know, he's just not 100%. And then he had, but he had a couple of really bad turnovers, um, live ball that he just, just flopped. That's when I think. Unless, correct me if I'm wrong, might have been on that 7-0 run a little bit right there at the end. Um, but I like that, you know, and Jake at the three. It's a big team. We'll, we'll, have, we'll play it, you know, um, as we move forward. Uh, you know, again, we rebounded the ball. I mean, Dallas had, what do you have? He had a bunch of rebounds. And he had 10. You know, Jake had eight. Linus had eight, you know. Um, I thought Jake played really hard. You know, Jake's a, he's a tough player, man. You know, uh, 15 and eight, a couple of assists, a couple of steals, you know, steal. He's going to be good. He's going to be a good player. Steve, did, did McCray come in and give you a little bit of a spark in the second half defensively? I thought so. I think that's the role I'm, I don't want to say I've been trying to sell him on, but yeah, that's the role I, I want him to play. And to, and I've told him to get playing time. That's your that's your opportunity. And I think, you know, athletically, guys, he, he's like those LSU guys, you know. And I want to be able to play him, but I got to trust him, you know, not as a person, as a player, you know, passing and catching and taking the right shots. And and uh, he's going to earn, you know, some more time. I hope. And because um, I think defensively, he can do it. He can do it, and uh, I think he showed that tonight in some in some situations. Coach, when you play a team that's that athletic and that rangy defensively in the half court and can, you know, mm -hmm. get kick outs and, and double so quickly and recover, what's the main emphasis on still being able to get good shots? Well, I think uh, faking and making. Fake one, make one. Does that make sense? I mean, that's what I tell them. Can't just – you, know, you can't just telegraph what you're doing. You got to got fake low, go high, go fake high, go low. You know, you got shot fake. Hey, listen, whenever we watch them play Penn State, Penn State had them in the blender a lot of times. And early on, we did too. You know, when we caught it, we shot fake. They leave the feet, you drive, get inside, come off two feet, pass, one more. We had some of that, but not enough. You know, but the pressure, the, the full court pressure, that, that bothered us, and it shouldn't have because it wasn't a very aggressive. It was just kind of a, you know, not passive, but they were kind of inviting you. But so what happens to answer your question, when you have two, when two guys come to you, you take on two guys, and you got to be able to throw out of it. And once you throw out of it, then you got to attack. And we weren't doing that. We couldn't get it out of there. And then when we got it to the middle or, or, we, sw or we went guard to guard, we held it. You got to go. Yeah, you got to attack pressure. We haven't seen that. We haven't seen it. And um, so we now have. And so we'll, we'll get better at it. Anything else for Coach, guys? One more thing. Just in yeah. general, how was the trip back to, uh, to Niceville, back to Northwest yeah. Florida? And how much does it hurt to take your first loss at Raider Arena? You got to bring that up. Um, well, Niceville is very nice. Okay, just like the, the – the, town the name of the town it was really nice it was great to see other people that I haven't seen in a long time and I don't like losing here I don't like losing especially didn't want to do that here um nine years ago tonight I saw the greatest game winning shot I've ever witnessed um as a head coach in this building I was kind of hoping we could rekindle that Chris Jones who played for me and played at Louisville you might remember him uh, we were down I think one with two seconds to go to Lee, he had 46 points. They shot a free throw, missed it. I didn't. I just started walking toward the coach. I was so disgruntled that we lost. We were going to lose. Chris got the rebound and shot it, shot it from the free throw line all the way, and whistled past my head. 
and he drained it. And we won the game. I, I heard the crowd roar. I turned. I looked at the scoreboard. I didn't know if we were – we won. I shook the coach's hand and said, hey, man, good game. Um, the greatest thing – the greatest game-winning shot I've ever seen in my life. Well, oh, didn't see, I should say. And to make it even worse, my manager didn't film it. And so we had to go back, call Lee Junior College in Baytown, Texas, to get copies to make sure I could see it. And so um, that was nine. I came, the reason why I know that, Facebook. You know, Facebook, nine-year memory came up today. I thought, well, that's a good omen, right? <laughs> it wasn't. So congrats to LSU. Um, they played really well. They played hard. And uh, we'll go home and learn. I'm not, I'm not, it's not the end of the world. I'm not down on my team. I would just, you know, got to get better. We got to figure it out. Appreciate your time, Coach. All right. Thanks. Yep.